And in another story, an emerging scientific field seeks to identify how traumatic stress could permanently alter one's DNA, which is then possibly passed on to descendants. Dr. Rachel Yehuda is a pioneer in epigenetics. Bet you never heard that word before. She's the director of the Mental Health Patient Care Clinic at the Peters Medical Center and a professor of psychiatry and neuroscience at Mount Sinai Hospital. And she's joining us here in our New York studio. Thank you so much for being here with us, Dr. Yehuda. It's good to see you. Uh, so first of all, just explain, uh, give us just a general in words that we can understand, description or definition of what epigenetics is? Epigenetics refers to the kind of changes that can occur on the DNA that will change the way that the DNA functions. And so it's not genetic change per se, it's a change on the gene that then can be transmitted to the next generation. I know in some of the work that you've done, you've looked at changes uh, in children of Holocaust survivors, that's correct. Yes. So explain how it is an event, an environment, can influence a change in the DNA. Well, if you think about the DNA, the DNA is living in the cell, and that's an environment. And there are all sorts of molecules in the cell. So when a person is exposed to trauma, this changes the environment in the cell and all sorts of molecules can find their way on the DNA and they can affect that the DNA works. Think about it this way. DNA is the recipe for who you are. Everyone's DNA is uniquely individual. However, as you know, if you've tried to cook any recipe, sometimes there are changes in your environment that will change the way the recipe comes out. A meringue is always egg whites, and sugar, but if it's a humid day or if you whip up the egg in a different pan, it's going to come out a little bit differently. That's an epigenetic change. And in practical terms that you're beginning to see in real life, how does that show up? For someone that went through a horror like the Holocaust, uh, then how would that show up in that person's DNA? Well, one of the things that we've looked at are little molecules that sit on top of the DNA and change the way that the um, RNA is made from the DNA itself. And what that does is it has the ability to change the way that the proteins are made and that will change the entire way that people can function. It can change mood, it can change behavior, it can change stress responses, it can change a lot of things. Speaking of those stress responses, of course, one of those stress hor uh, hormones is cortisol. And as I understand it from the reading that I, that I looked through, it could change the amount of cortisol that would be found in that person. Uh, is that correct? You're, now you're, you're narrowing yes, yes. your eyes at no, me. No, it's correct, <laughs> but more importantly than that, it can change the way that cortisol behaves in the body. And then can that then be passed down to that person's offspring? Well, we're finding that it, that it may very well pass down because we looked first at adult children of Holocaust survivors and found that they had the same changes in cortisol as in their first generation parents. And we thought this might be a result of their upbringing. But then we looked at cortisol levels in babies that were born to mothers who were exposed to the world Trade Center and who were pregnant on 9-11 while they were running out of the towers. And they had the same kind of low cortisol levels that their mothers had who had PTSD. So we realized it wasn't it's about upbringing. It's just incredible. Yeah. 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 What, what uh, amazing work. This is an emerging field that's just fascinating. Thank you. Dr. Rachel Yehuda, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for coming Thanks in. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Thanks. And this is Arise America.